Okay, so it's time for Off the Press. My analyst has joined me via Zoom. Jida Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos. But he's joining us from Ibadan this morning. Good morning, Chief Johnson. Good morning, Chief Johnson. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a pleasure to, to be with you this morning. Always. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, you, you are in Ibadan right now, and um, I wonder, were you able to see uh, the governor at Keredolu, who we understand is back in town and is recuperating well, uh, in Ibadan? Well, Mackindy, you are talking about Dondo. The Ondo um, state governor. Mackindy. But we understand oh, that he's back, but he's uh, in Ibadan where he's recuperating. Oh, wonderful. That's, that's good news. It's a welcome development. We wish him soon as we come. Soon as recovery um, from, from what have you so that he can face the business of governors which he's elected to do. Yes. I have not been able to see him, neither have been able to see the host governor, the governor of um, Oyo State. Oyo State. I came here on a private visit, not on a political visit. You are yeah, not exactly. a politician. Yeah, I'm not. Um, <laughs> Okay, so let's begin with the Guardian newspaper. And it leads with poor lessons from 2020. This is their big story this morning. Uh, details of that can be found on pages four and five. Endless wait for palliatives in states amid accountability deficit. You know, I I'm becoming really very tired about talking about these palliatives, Mr. Johnson. Because of the way it's been, it's been handled in Nasarawa State, you know, after the ugly incidents and pictures and videos we saw, uh, the DSS carried out some investigations and, and have been able to arrest some of uh, the officials, the state officials, and some traders in the market where these goods were diverted to and being sold. What, what, you know, the reason why some Nigerians have said, look, NLC, these palliatives you're talking about shouldn't really, don't bother about it coming in form of food. Let it come in form of infrastructure. Let it come in form of tax, you know, uh, considerations Great. and all of that. What's your take on what's going exactly. on with these palliatives? Well, um, it's unfortunate that we find ourselves in this situation. The more things seem to change, the more they remain the same. You recall the, the, the fear is a lot of people a lot of critics expressed with government, um, with the present government at the federal level when they came up with the issue of this palliative to ease the burden of the removal of forest subsidy and the attending, the attending um, effect of this forest subsidy removal on cost of living, standard of living, and the rest of it. And the, the key questions were asked with respect to this. Judging from the experience we had during the COVID-19, where palliatives were, were stored in warehouses and where palliatives um, that were meant for, for, for the people were used as an um, as empowerment program and was, was, were also used to celebrate birthdays of some elected representative. Mm -hmm. So from the history of palliative, Nigerians have never had it good with respect to being a uh, beneficiary of this palliative, not to even talk of um, the, 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 the funds that were shared by the Minister of Humanitarian Resource during the, during the palliative season. It's unfortunate, and, uh, and that's why a lot of people said, well, this, this palliative um, will not achieve any desired effect because, as usual, uh, this will go into the wrong, it will go into the, the wrong head that, that do not need it rather mm -hmm. that the people that needed it will not actually get it and we also ask the question what and how are you going to get what data how did you collect your data how did you get the household mm. what framework are you going to use to 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 to, to distribute this this palliative other than for you to distribute the palliative at the local government secretariat how many people can assess the local government secretariat and all of this so a lot of a lot of questions were raised with respect to logistics, and government gave assurances um, that this would be done. You know, there was objection to the fact that, oh, it would be done to a political thing if they make use of the governors and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. 
And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that one in the first instance, how would you be removing how would you be removing subsidy on one hand, and then you are also getting resources to do palliative. It's it's more or less like you are doing subsidy again. So the government seems to be in a cycle with no with with no clear with no clear policy on how, how to solve this particular problem or how to ameliorate the problem, the self-inflicted wound, they inflicted on themselves and they also inflicted on Nigeria. Yeah, and, and, and the sad thing is that the sad thing is that Nigerians continue to suffer from it, especially the poorest of the poor, the vulnerable uh, people. Let, let me look at the other, I'll, I'll just read out the other headlines here, and then we'll take a look at another one before we move to the next newspaper. Above the masthead, you have 30 killed in Abuja landslide, 19 kidnapped, Wiki other surveillance. And then you have Lagos Assembly rejects two commissioner nominees, confirms 15 others. Let the hammer fall on same sex unions. A troops kill 814 terrorists, arrest 1,903 in three months. Then you have Atiku Obi reject PEPC ruling, head for Supreme Court. Uh, and then you have Nigeria needs prayers to end insecurity, says Defense Minister. Well, I'm, I'm, a lot of talks have been, you know, made with regards to the PEPC ruling. Let's let's talk about the minister that's talking about the Defense Minister, who says mean, uh, we need prayer, we need prayers uh, to end insecurity. Uh, you know, my 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 thought here when I read this. I, I, I just said, you know, if prayer is what we need, perhaps we should have put in pastors and imams to head that ministry. India is a country that is highly religious. Uh, if you are looking for a country where people go to churches on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, even in the morning and in the night, and if you are looking for a country where you have people going to Mark Mon Monday to Fridays, and, then, and if you are looking for a country whereby on Fridays, everybody will go for Juma service, and on Sundays, people don't even come to work in the first instance. It's Nigeria. Uh, uh, there's, 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 there's a principle established by the, uh, the pro-counselor of, of Covenant University, mm. who said that um, if anything that, is man, that man is meant to do for himself, that is expecting to do, is witchcraft. <laughs> now the reason why God gave there is there is witchcraft. Now God gave, uh, and there is also this this maxim: walk and pray. Now walk and pray. God has given man the capacity to to think, to walk, and then to pray. There is no amount of prayer you pray if you don't till the ground. You you won't you won't you won't you won't harvest your food. Then mm -hmm. we should also resort to praying and not going to farm. We should resort to praying and not go to school. We should resort to praying. You see, the, 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 the way they've, 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 they've taken this thing to the, to, 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 to the ridiculous level. You are, we are being appointed as a minister to solve a problem. You come up with an idea on how to solve this problem. This does not require rocket science. The bandits, the criminals, and the rest of them. Ex, except that um, they, are not, they are not operating within the confines of Nigeria. Or otherwise, there is, there is an organization behind this, behind this nefarious crime this terrorist activity, except that there is a support within the security architecture. Yeah, you know, there is a theory. There is a theory. There is a theory, <laughs> there, there, is a theory so that they link. to resort to self -help, and that's FF is, you and I, if you want to travel, you resort to prayer, we we'll pray, and then <laughs> we we'll pray for that security to, 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 to be resolved. It's, 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 rather, it's rather unfortunate that you put people in office and then one of the things they try to do is is to is to is, is to choose the ridiculous option to play on the intelligence of Nigerians because they know a lot of Nigerians are, are, are highly religious people and they, die, they use that that religion to 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 play. Look, for example, you want to write an exam and you are praying, you are not ready. You have already you have broken a principle. You will fail in Jesus' name. <laughs> Inshallah, in every way. You do you know because. God, God, there are two basic principles that establish the world. One is the law of uh, is the law of productivity. Let everything produce after its kind. Now, the second one is that's why human beings will give back to human beings. That's why a corn will give back to me. 
That's why monkey will give to monkey. It's the law of productivity. You can't change it. It's the cause of nature. The second one is the law of concession. It's the law of cause and effect. What a man so he will reap. So it's the law of concession. That's the second law. Now, now if you don't take the rightful step in solving a problem, the problem becomes monumental problem. So when these people um <coughs> when these people talk, when these people talk, I want to say one for lesson. When you hear these people talk, if you like, you cook, cook, je, je. If you don't like, you <laughs> die, je, je. So when you hear them talk, you begin to question their intelligence. You begin to question their intelligence. You begin to question their leadership, quotient. And then you begin to question how do we find ourselves in this situation whereby the Minister of Defense will sit and say, you know what? Minister of Defense. I mean, it's 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 quite a mind boggling to be honest with oh, you. I, when I saw it, I, I just said, and start praying, and start praying, and then the enemy they are fighting to will just be defeated. All right, let's um, take one more headline here, and then we'll move forward to the next newspaper. Let the hammer fall on same-sex uh, unions. What's your take on that? About 60-something of them were arrested in Delta State uh, about a week ago during now, there's the wedding. There's a certain law in Nigeria. Uh, you see, one of the things I tell people is that for you to understand the environment you find yourself and understand the culture of that environment and also understand the, 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 the rules of engagement within that. As far as African society are concerned, a marriage is defined between a man and a woman. African culture does not recognize same sex marriage. Um, until there is a lot of that, if, if, if you run far of the law, you should be prosecuted. And that's 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 my view. As far as there's no there's no provision for six, same sex marriage in 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 in, in our and if you, who are um, found guilty of that, capable of breaking that law. They face the music. They face the music. Otherwise, there's no, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no society without customs, without law, so will not fall if these people are prosecuted. Yeah, but the, it does seem to me, and some others who are keenly watching this, that. There may be what looks like selective justice here. I mean, some people have boldly, I know a particular individual in this country, a celebrity, whose interview I've read, who openly said that he is gay. He hasn't been arrested. And one other well, very they funny didn't, they didn't, character. They didn't, make, they, didn't make, they didn't make any attempts to organize it. You see, for example, um, uh, they, didn't make, they didn't make any attempt to 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 organize a program uh, to organize a group wedding that's just self pronouncement by that person mm. uh, if he's caught in an act okay you got to be caught in an law, act then he should be prosecuted there's nobody that is, you said what so if you're saying thing, you're saying to be arrested as a gay person in Nigeria you have to be caught in the act it's not just enough to say to confess that to, you are to make gay, that you must be found to, to be in the act. Uh, exactly, to make that pronouncement. For, for example, these people that were arrested in Delta State, they organized, I think, um, a group wedding, uh, uh, allegedly. And um, so as, as as far as I'm concerned, they, they, they are caught in the act, and then they should face the music. For example, you can't go to Western country and say you want to practice polygamy. Mm -hmm. If you try to do that, what would be the law? say concerning that what do you think will happen to that person it will be good at so mm -hmm. you want to understand the environment and the culture of the environment and the, and the laws the ethics and the customs culture and the values of whichever environment you have found yourself it's very clear if you're in room you behave like romans mm -hmm. and if you're in nigeria you behave like nigerians okay so let's look at the nation newspaper now the nation newspaper leads with atiku obi why we are challenging tribunal verdict. All right, the writers, don't go to Supreme Court. Belo, Wike, Bruce, urge PDP, LP candidates. APC, 
judgment reinforces democracy, judiciary's vibrancy. Maybe we should touch well, on this a little bit. Yeah, I think that um, it's important for all options to be exhausted by, by, by those that feel aggrieved by, by the outcome of 2022 election. The first, the court of first instance has been explored. It's their right to appeal to the Supreme Court. And it's also good to strengthen the jurisprudence of, 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 of electoral litigation in Nigeria. It's important because whatever pronouncement that comes out of the Supreme Court becomes a grand, a grand norm and a canon of, 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 what, of what guides future elections. For example, some of the pronouncement of, um, of the presidential election petition tribunal uh, established some basic clarification with respect to constitutional provisions that we thought that, well, um, a lot of people have different interpretations to it. So it's, 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 it's contingent upon this um, Supreme Court to make the final interpretation. Do you think there'll be a difference, final. though? Do you think there'll be a well, difference, whether though? There is, well, 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 whether, there is, whether there is, whether there is, whether there is a difference, whether there is difference, whether there is difference in, whether there is difference in them, um, in the outcome or whether they maintain the outcome. The most important thing is that whatever interpretation to some of the basic principles that the, that were established in the judgment of the Supreme, in the judgment of the presidential election petition tribunal, which is the appeal court, which is the court of first instance. If it's further reinforced by the Supreme Court, it becomes the grand norm. It becomes it becomes the final interpretation of what the concern is. Uh, for example, if the Supreme Court is affirmed the position of the of the appeal court on, on, on the status of Abuja as being a state, well, it becomes a grand norm. It, that means that Abuja now becomes the 37 states of the Federation. So it's contingent on the, on the indigenous of Abuja to make a requirement for the National Assembly, to provide them with the state house of assembly, to provide them with the, the, the governor. governor and the rest of it, mm -hmm. so that they also can also enjoy the status of, of what, what, what goes to a state. So all of these things are very, very important. Hmm. No, no. All right. So all, we, of let... that, all of these are very, it's, it's very, all of these are very very important for us to establish. Let the Supreme Court make the the final pronouncement on this. Um, some interpretations with respect to the to, to the rules of INEC in the election, to whether um, the electoral. Uh, it, 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 Okay, we, there's a bit of. Uh, it's not you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of a lot of uh, principles. By, 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 by as there are there are so many things that a lot of us are, are, are wondering. Where, for example, what is the rule of INEC, and then what is the essence of guideline if those guidelines are not followed and the rest of it. So it's important for this matter to get to the Supreme Court. Let them exhaust all the options. That is available to them and let supreme court rule on this matter and then we know the areas in which we want to do reforms reforms concerning our electoral our our electoral our electoral law so that um, the national assembly can be approached and then what is required to do in terms of doing amendment to the electoral act in nigeria will be done because we want the election to be conducted and after election to, after election we don't want this level of Litigations here, left, right, and center. So much and distraction. Mm -hmm. on so much winner distraction. Of the we want, we want, we want, we want the actual winner of the election to come from the ballot, not from the courts. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want. So we must look at what are the areas that needed improvement with respect to our electoral act, and so that we can strengthen the 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 the, 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 the process through which those that are governors are elected. It's good for the look. It's not about 2023 election. And it's not about APC. It's not about PDP. It's not about Labour. It's about Nigeria. It's about 2027. It's about 2030. It's about moving forward. And mm -hmm. then you must. There are, what are the lessons that we need to learn? But people will always say, oh, why, why, why do they need to go to court? They should join us together and let's make oh, let's move this nation forward. It's important for us to strengthen the institutions of our democracy. It's Indeed. important. We, we Indeed. Saw, we saw the ECOWAS report. We saw the EU report. Indeed. Let me read out now uh, the other headlines here, and then we we'll touch on two of them and then move to the next newspaper. Well, you have 
above the masthead, Nigeria, Australia, to partner on training of local miners. Custom stops defaulting banks from revenue collection. Akere Dolu recuperating in Ibado on return from vacation. Lagos Assembly drops two Sunwo lose new nominees. Nwike Atiku Tambuwal killing PDP should be suspended. And then you have all theft firms, MDAs, host communities involved, says security chiefs. Uh, all right, so to touch on two of these. Perhaps you start well, with... Well, let me talk on what Wiki, uh, Wiki said, that uh, Diko and Tavu are killing PDP. Okay. You know, in 1999, we have three major political parties as the major actors. And in fact, three political parties were registered in 1999 for the transition to the Fourth Republic. We have ANPP, APP, then the later metamorphosed into ANPP, and then, then we have the Alliance for Democracy, and then we have People's Democratic Party. As we speak today, hmm. it's only the PDP that has survived. And I, from all indications, from what we've seen from the AD, from PD, from ANPP, what we had in those parties was self-inflicted wound. The party imploded from within, and that's why the party went into extinction. They couldn't even survive, and they had to merge with other party, and then re emerge as new political parties. You know, AD. Out of AD came ACCN, the later metamorphosed with other with uh, the function of CPC that moved out of ANPP into 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 APC in in twenty in twenty fourteen. So as it is going now, it's, it's very clear that by the next election, if care is not taken, there wouldn't be any political party called PDP uh, because there you can see the self implosion already taking place with the, within within that within that. Um, Political party. I just see this hypothetically. For example, um, um, uh, for example, let's see that okay, like Wiki postulated, Atiku and Tambol are suspended, and the party is handed over to Wiki. So, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, can Wiki serve two master? Presently, is 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 a minister under an APC government. Where does this reality? Can he can he be working when there is election? Would he be working against his masters, his present master, in the interest of his own party? So. PDP needs to put his house in order and provide constructive opposition. If, if care is not taken, the party is already dead. Because two of the parties that started in 20, in 1919 with them are already dead. And it's, it's, it's very clear that um, the party um, lacks cohesion, lacks, lacks discipline, and lacks direction. Hmm. Okay, so let, let's touch on um, the all theft. All theft. Firms, MDAs, host communities involved, say security chiefs. You said what? Let's touch on the you all theft. What? I can't hear. The all theft. Oil Se theft. Yes, yeah, security now, chiefs say. About, you see, when we talk about oil theft, it is not possible to commit a crime. Now, if you want to find a crime, if you want to fight a crime, you must involve the local. Of course. You need local intelligence. You need community involvement, community engagement. Now, if you bring, and if you say that, okay, local communities are involved. If those, one, in the first instance, those you bring to go and monitor the, loop, the environment, they are not usually from that environment. And that's why some people have argued for local policing. They are not from that environment. They are meant to go and do monitoring to provide security, and they engage in nefarious activities, and the people that are as a, a scene, others that are not their indigenous, that are not from their community, they too will do. What do they too will do? They also will be, they will become part and parcel. If you it turns to a basic issue of you can't beat them, what do you do? If you can't beat them, you join them. So, as far as this issue of oil theft is concerned, there is one question I keep asking: When you seize a vessel, Engage in oil theft. Why do you why do you destroy those vessels? Why don't you arrest, seize those vessels, and convert those resources to Nigerian resources? Why do you have to destroy it? Why are you destroying evidence? Because the first thing you see is that we are this machine about in, in, in less than 
four months, we've seen two or two vessels being destroyed that were arrested and they said the vessels are destroyed. Are they, are, are they covering up for some people? Are they destroying evidence? You should gather evidence because that you should be able to get intelligence. When those vessels are arrested, you'll be able to track how many times we, which area have these vessels gone to, how many times have they done what and the rest of it. There must be a record. There must be a schedule. But if you destroy it, you have destroyed the evidence. Hmm. And then you won't see those that are arrested. Uh, is this is spirit that is driving those, that is that's navigating those vessels? Mm -hmm. And then you will not see any one of them be prosecuted openly, like they, like they are doing for the gay people. Oh, well, and some have also advocated that the illegal refineries be converted to legal that's, ones. That you, you come once is the resources, for example. I, 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 I would digress a little bit. For example, we seized buildings, buildings from people that have stolen money from the country. Mm -hmm. You come back to the government and say, instead of selling this building to your cronies, or burning them down, there are government offices that are still renting buildings. There are government offices that are renting buildings. Mm. Why not convert those buildings to government offices rather than sell it to your cronies? Mm -hmm. And then government will also be using money to pay rentage for, for office facilities for some of some of the ministries, agencies, and the panel of God. For example, new ministries have been created in Abuja now. There are houses that have been seized, they are under seal, hmm. and that have been recovered by EFCC and ICPC. Why don't we convert those buildings to government offices and not destroy it or sell it off? And at the end of the day, you sell it up at cheap prices, and then the money will not even come to government. Mm -hmm. if you sold to the And that's why EFCC chairmen have always had problems. Why should we be using, why should we be also using money to buy vehicles? When you seize thousands of vehicles, because when you recover vehicles from those that have made this nation dry, you convert those resources to state use. Mm -hmm. Some of these buildings, you, that you convert them to hospital. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a real Government does not even need to start from the scratch again. Yeah, I, 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 I get the sense in which you're feeling the frustration. Uh, let's move to the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads with tribunal judgment. APC lampoons Atiku Obi, opposition attacks INEC. Well, the writers there, judgment divided, devoid of justice, says... XVP, OB, opposition planned beavers hacking. APC insists uh, petitioners' legal team storms court of appeal for judgment certified true copy. Well, in front of the, this newspaper, you have um, pictures of passengers stranded uh, as foreign airlines delay and cancel flights at the MMIA yesterday. So uh, let's now, look at the masthead, above the masthead, set up customer center, FG tells discos, probe, rep summon Nimasa, NPA, NPCL, MDAs, um, others, and manufacturers pay 607 billion naira tax in six months. That's according to NBS, the National Bureau of Statistics. Then, uh, well, let's pick out one or two you want to talk about from these ones I've read out. Well, um, I, I, I don't like the framing of the major headline in, in, in the Punch newspaper. Uh, okay. The framing, it's, um, which, from which angle should they have reported this particular story? From the angle of uh, the party that um, actually won at the tribunal, from the angle of the parties that are aggrieved with the outcome of the election, and then even look at the choice of words. Sometimes it's important for, for, for those of us that are given responsibility as, as being the watchdog of the society for us not to be a bit a bit um, a bit biased in our reporting and uh, in what in what we do. Uh, it's, it's important for us to strengthen the institution of, of our demo of our democracy. Uh, every one of us asks questions. We raised a lot of issues um, concerning the election and then mm, 
uh, at the end of the at the end of the, the judgment, um, there are even a lot of questions that have been asked, and that's the responsibility that falls on us as 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 as, as the accountability institution, as the fourth estate of the realm, as the institution of order. So that um, uh, what 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 do you think the victor of the election would do? It would be to berate the those that are challenging their the election and the media shouldn't be highlighting the divisions within the political landscape in Nigeria. So that's my take on that. What is the editorial position? Is the editor that frames the story and it frames the story the way he wants it to be framed? Mm. That is the decision. But if I was given, if I'm teaching the student and I'm and I'm teaching them journalism and I'm telling them what it means to be the habitat of truth and the habitat of, as a watchdog, not to be a partisan hack, there's a way in which the story be framed in such a way that um, you could see how bold the headline with and then the, the riders for 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 the counter for example abc lampoons um um people and, and pdp pdp then the comma pdp uh, disagrees with judgment that's 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 the balance and then both headline you have captured both two sides of the view but the way it's, it's been done, it's not, um, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not um, proper journalism. That's that's my take. Someone else might disagree with it, but in in journalism, we said you must provide a balance. You mm. Must the two sides of shade of opinion must must be given an opportunity to hear. Um, their, 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 their views. Uh, yeah, it's a major ethics of the profession. Well, now that we've talked about our people, uh, let's, let me uh, say something in defense of our colleagues who, whose pictures uh, circulated online that they slept you know, during the PEPC uh, tribunal uh, judgment. Uh, I personally do not blame them for sleeping off. I mean, I was watching at home and I was tired. It was so long and... No, no, there's, there's no way. That, I think that the was, um, for example, some have argued that the judgment should have been broken into different days. <sighs> the one for, you know, for you to sit down 12 hours and Amba. be... There's, there's nobody... That's why we have schedule. For example, you can't present program from now till till till, till 9 p.m. tonight. Mm. You... It's, 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 it's human nature. It's, it is very, very natural for people to fall asleep. So it's very, very natural for people to fall to fall asleep. The judges did not come, did not, did, did not come to deliver judgment two days ago. Uh, they, you know when they have written the final addresses mm. before they made their appearance. How often do they appear? So they, they are medically, mentally, emotionally. They were. Fully prepared. They had the judgment. If any, if we have been told that that judgment would take twelve hours, nobody will believe it. Mm. Nobody will believe. Nobody will believe it. But the judges have prepared the judgment. They knew the number of hours. So they are mentally and emotionally prepared. I was watching the judgment too. You know what I do? After I, after I stayed, I went. I went to my bedroom and I slept for three hours. And mm -hmm. I came back to still make the judgment. And I still followed the judgment. I left the judgment. To go and do some other things, I came back to be judgment. So if I were in court, for example, if I was scheduled in court, what do you think would happen to me? <laughs> You'd have I joined have a sleeping you. spree. I, I personally I, I would have sl had like, a good like sleep over there anybody. myself. Yeah. I didn't like yeah. the picture yeah. of yeah. Chief Mike yeah. Zuckerman, which was going round. I love that man. <laughs> I'm sure he would be very unhappy no, people, with that picture. No, but, for example, if there is a certain age you get, you can't cheat nature. Let people say whatever they want to say concerning the rest of it. Do we even know whether some of the judges were dozing? Those that were not reading, you can't see their faces. Okay, so you let's move. Their faces. There's nobody, there's nobody that did not fall asleep. There's the, there's virtually nobody that did not catch. <laughs> even if they, there are some that caught a nap. Uh there's there, there, there was, I don't want to mention him. It was across board. Some of the governors, some of the they caught a nap, so it's it's, it's normal, it's contingent for yeah. you to stay. Um, and then don't forget that it was the judgment of the party Jose Kome was representing that was read last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the judgment of the party that was read last. Okay, so let's move to nature news. The nature news leads with Nigeria fruits market. How unhealthy practices endanger the lives of consumers. 
And I, I find it's very, um, I'm excited with this you know, report because, I mean, it's a major concern. It's a major concern. The way we handle food, the way our food vendors, a lot of them handle food, especially fruits and vegetables, would make you almost not want to eat them. And so when you buy them, you wash and wash. You wash with salt. You wash with um, whatever it is you can you wash. Sometimes taking, after you washing... You have taken away the nutrients. You have taken away the nutrients. When the you vegetables. wash with salt, before cutting. Yeah, you have, yeah, you have taken away the nutrients of the vegetable. Seriously? So you should, have you have, should you be eating the dirt? If you have taken away the nutrient of the vegetable when you wash with salt and the rest of it, you have already taken away the nutrient of the vegetable. But I do uh, understand. I understand what we should do with the vegetable. I do understand what, I do understand the fears of people with respect to our storage facility. And it's important and then the logistic with which you move this um, food from, um, uh, you know, that's why when COVID broke out, um, Western world thought that they would be picking dead bodies in Africa because we don't have, we don't, we don't, we don't. Even when they came up with the vaccine, you know, they said that it must, it must be refrigerated at a certain, at a certain, at a certain, at a certain level mm. for for them to make use to make use of it. So it's about storage facility. It's about logistics of moving goods from the from the hinterland to the country, and that's why a lot of people have argued that we need to do a lot of improvement when it comes to using cargo in moving things. While we were young, I stay very close to the railway. You see, we used to buy these fresh vegetables. You know, these people move from somewhere in Ogun State, it's called it or God. They move, you have the vegetable, you have the, they move from, from there in Ogun State to Yaba, and then they'll be stopping at every railway station. People will go, you buy a vegetable, you buy whatever you want to buy from there. The fruits, fresh fruits, and the rest of it. You know, if you, if you visit the market, you see where Tom's side, where you see a lot of oranges, and some of these foods getting rotten is because we have not provided storage facilities. Yeah. I was having a discussion with my, my, my friends yesterday because we came here for 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 for, 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 for a barrier. And I said, you know, you know, you, you know what? The richest people in the sixties, in the fifties, were not politicians. Mm. They were farmers. They were cocoa farmers. They were commodity produce farmers and then consumer Based produce from us. They were, they were, they were, they, they were traders. People, they were traders, and they were artisans. And it is those were the people that were the richest people in 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 Nigeria then. Yeah. As I said, fast forward to 2023, the richest people in Nigeria today are who? politicians. They are not farmers. They are politicians. They are politicians. So they have not put in place measures in place that will help the farmers. You recall those silos. You recall the largest, the tallest building in Africa was built with cocoa money. You recall the, the famed granite pyramids in Kano and the rest of it, or yes. the plantation you have in this, in the, the palm kernel plantations you have in the south, south and the southeast. So we need to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. To the drawing board in the sense that we must provide, why is food very, very expensive in <laughs> it's because of the cost of transportation of moving these goods. Yes. And then they will dump everything together. The truck, it is not, it is not covered. You see the you see the pickups they used to pick, pick vegetables. The vegetables will be in the in the open air. It's not it's not sealed, it's not refrigerated, it's not protected. So those are the challenges. You know, I've, I have interviewed that's why you have seen. I have interviewed that, that's two. Why you have seen. There was there was a thesis I established with my students was the thesis more than more than 15 years ago. And I said, this is this is my this is based on my argument. Our mother has never given birth to Syrian oppression. Majority of us in our generation were never given birth to Syrian oppression. I said, you know the reason why our mothers eat fresh vegetables, vegetables mm -hmm. planted by 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 planted by the bathroom door, planted in the backyard. Our mothers um, don't go to the market to eat the vegetable, the vegetable that they've moved and the films from from the cars that are going on the on the road in the market have not settled on those vegetables. Their own vegetables were fresh. They pluck it, they eat it. And when you eat vegetable, it 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 improves your blood circulatory your blood circulatory system and yeah. and the rest of it. And then they don't go to work sitting in the car for money in the night. Sit, sitting when they sit in the car in the traffic, they go to work. And then when they get to the office, they sit in one place. But they 
they go to the farm, they exercise their cervix. So their cervix, while they were while they were pregnant, they were exercising their cervix. But now, lo and behold, now women will sit inside the car. They will stay inside traffic. They will go to the office. They will sit they'll in sit one for place. Hours. It is where they sit down that you order for food to eat. They've not exercised their body. They've not eat even eat bread vegetable that will aid their circulation. So that will increase increase the rate of birth through to cesarean operation. Hmm. Because what you eat. Is what is who you are, mm -hmm. and so when we look at all of this, our government is not helping with respect to this. What are the storage facilities in the market? You know, they just build stores. There are no storage facilities. Yeah, it's, it's a major problem. It's a major problem which have been highlighted by those who are involved in agriculture. They've said it repeatedly. I've interviewed two of them who have alluded to this challenge: no cooling rooms, no storage, nothing. And so at the end of the day, the farmers lose a large chunk of their produce. And, and then the ones we eventually get are not as fresh as they should be. A lot needs to be done. Well, thank you so much, Chief Jide Johnson, for your time on the breakfast yeah. this morning. Yeah, and that's, that's you. It's a pleasure to be Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Chief Jide Johnson has been my guest. He's a lecturer and consultant uh, with the... Um, Okay, see, he's a lecturer with the Nigerian Institute of Journalism here in Lagos. He joined us from Ibado this morning. Do stay with us. We'll be back and uh, we'll be taking our very first hot topic.